all right so welcome back everyone in this video we are going to detect malware wanna cry ransomware basically okay and i'll i'll take you through the entire incident response process from detection to analysis to uh containment to eradication you know lesson learned and every stages and in the second half of this video i'll take you through the our practical edr tool to show you how it is done practically all right so let's get started but wait 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 if you haven't subscribed the channel yet do subscribe it now it actually keeps us motivated okay now let's begin with the incident response process we detected the malware okay now it indicates that the malicious file or the program has been detected and in most of the cases, if you are on your EDR solutions like CrowdStrike, uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, Cisco XDR, or Sentinel-1, it will be quarantined by itself automatically. And you get the message saying that malware has been detected. And in bracket, probably you will also see quarantine. Okay, that means it has been quarantined uh it it's been isolated uh malware the system has been isolated by itself so that it won't spread across the network it uh, it may also prevent it uh, it also prevent it from executing further and spread across the rest of the network right usually uh in in such scenarios uh you know uh typically this alerts provide a lot of information like file origin type uh potential impact uh, and many more other relevant information. Don't worry, we will learn about that in the XDR tool. For now, let's begin with these steps, okay? First is the preparation. So the most important step in this is, there are multiple, of course. Give me one second, let me minimize this. Yeah, perfect. Now, we need to make sure we create the automatic quarantine actions. If it has not been configured, you should make sure it's been configured by itself so that it automatically isolate the infected files and endpoint upon detection. Or you also get the uh, notification, you can run different playbooks itself. Um, so that, that's very, very, very useful, okay? Next, you have to set up the IOC-based threat hunting. IOC is the indicator of compromise. This include multiple information, this can be uh, this can be related to uh, IP hash uh, hash of the file, which is uh, you know fixed string uh, length, which you can use it to perform a lookup on different websites like Virus Total, okay, which will scan against multiple uh, antivirus system, and you will get to know how many antivirus softwares are detecting it as suspicious or malicious, okay then ioc can be your ip addresses if it's a blacklisted ip address or can be a domains as well or malicious domain okay now next you also uh you know uh make sure you implement the network segmentation for isolation as well so that if it happen in one network it won't spread across the rest of the network right next uh establishing a proper backup uh verification and uh, restoration testing as well. So this is also very important so that uh, you perform drill exercises, specifically focusing on the malware scenarios where we, you ensure that if something goes wrong with any endpoint, you should be able to back up the entire system. This is very useful in case of ransomware kind of attack as well, okay? Now, let's move to the detection step, right? This is where you detected the alert. And now first, let me show you a few samples. Uh, first is the suspicious file detected and quarantine uh, malware hash Trojan file. Next, it could be a ransomware uh, logbit malware itself, uh, which has been found in the user download folder. Third could be malicious script detected in the memory, which most likely be a fileless malware, um, you know, fileless malware itself. In our case, we are going to look at the demo or sample WannaCry uh, malware, okay, or uh, ransomware. Now, uh, as a part of detection, your job would be to make sure you analyze the quarantine file. You look at how many systems are currently being impacted. What is the IOCs? I mean, what is the, um, you know, uh, observable you have or maybe IOCs you have. Okay. A few things I wanted to tell you, which is very important. 
um the diff uh, there, there are difference between observables and iocs ioc is the indicator of compromise that yes your network or your endpoint has been compromised for sure 100 percent okay but observables are possible ioc these are possible iocs okay that the chances of uh, the the confidence level is probably 50 percent or maybe 70 percent so most likely both are same where it could be a file name uh, malicious file name ip address domain name uh, hash file hash value as well but th there is a difference in the observable and ioc i hope you understand that now okay now let's talk about the next step which you will try to perform the cross check with the threat intelligence tools like virus total as well and you also investigate the user how exactly it came into the system right next let's move to into the next step which is false positive okay now false positive is very important while you do the analysis you also make sure you these are not really the legitimate application being flagged due to outdated uh, antivirus definition or unusual file behavior or any unsigned update as well so this is very very important and this is usually done by the SOC analyst level one itself in the very in the in the in the beginning okay and SOC analyst level two should also verify that before they go ahead in the further step okay now once we verified once we have done with the analysis then we need to move to the quarantine step okay sorry containment step okay in the containment we basically make sure we isolate the affected endpoint well to be very honest there could be multiple uh, containment steps involved but i'm just covering few important one when we look at our xdr tool i'll show you multiple other containment uh, options as well so first could be isolate the affected endpoints so that uh, if if you isolate the machine if you isolate the machine uh, let's say this there are probably three machine in a network right in in your situation in the enterprise network that could be 100 right so if this machine get compromised and uh, you know um, if this machine get compromised with the ransomware it might spread across with the other machines as well but if you isolate them from the network itself it won't spread to the rest of the machine so that's the first thing that you have to look at and of course before you even do that you have to make sure you verified all the affected machine in the detection step itself so that you can isolate maybe two three four how many you know it depends on that you also need to make sure you disable the user account so that it won't be you know uh, you, you know user machine it block any unauthorized access into the system as well you also block those malicious ip address and domains as well quickly based on the iocs that you have found earlier right next we have next we have uh, uh, eradication step in the eradication step basically we make sure we remove the residual malware traces we delete the related files registry entries uh, schedule tasks that might persist beyond the initial quarantine then we look at performing the uh, full malware scan of the machine we run the comprehensive malware scan on the endpoint to ensure that all the remain uh, you know all the remnants of the uh, infections are removed then we check for the persistence technique. Uh, if it's the Linux, we look at the cron, jo cron jobs. Or if it's a Windows, we look at any scheduled task as well onto the machine, right? Next, we have recovery step. Now, recovery is once everything has been done, once we have we, we are sure that machine is clean now, then we will plan to restore the machine. We restore from its backup. That's why in the preparation steps, I talk about the drill exercises, right? So we make sure we restore the from the backup, the healthy backup, the clean backup. And then we look for monitor for any reinfection as well. So we increase the monitoring of that specific endpoint and user account for post uh, eradication to detect any potential resurgence of, uh, of possible infection as well. We also look, patch the identified vulnerabilities as well into the system, right? Finally, lesson learned. 
And of course, we, we also have communication, but this is the most important step where we make sure we perform the post incident review uh, document. We document the key insight. We enhance the detection and response rules as well. And finally, we work on the communication where we inform all the key stakeholders, including the legal team, level two team, and we compile the detailed incident report. All right, so this is all about the incident response process. Let's look at our XDR tool practically. All right, so now we are on our Cisco XDR platform, our extended detection and response tool. Okay, and you can see this is our alert, uh, which is WannaCry ransomware. Uh, and you can see only one asset has been impacted, which this is the name of the asset. And there are around 27 events into it. There are seven observable. If you remember, I told you the difference between observable and IOCs. IOCs are confirmed one, observable are not so confirmed, okay? So you can see there, there are multiple events under each IOC. Let's go, let's get into the detection phase first. You can find all the IOCs and you can verify as well against different verdict coming in from virus total. So uh, the benefit of XDR is you don't have to manually look at the file, create a hash and submit them on virus total yourself like this. Uh, instead, uh, XDR perform the lookup on the virus total automatically. You can copy the value as well here and go and submit it. And you can find the detail like so 62 out of 72 security vendors flagged this file as malicious. You can see them, right? Of course, Cisco must be included somewhere. Uh, and then you can find and also you can add it to your case or active case and investigate it further. These are all the hash value of different files. And these are all different, uh, you know, um, observable. Maybe IP address, domain, file name, everything. You can see this one as well. This is again another verdict. Of course, this is the hash value. So maybe a file, okay. Next, you can go to the response phase, which start with the identification. So you make sure you review the incident, you analyze the indicator, which we have done already. You can mention some notes as well so that you can, you know, uh, and then you can ensure that you are following all the checklists, just like what happened in the, you know, cabin crew or uh, flight attendant as every everything what happened in the flight, right? They follow a checklist. So Cisco XDR comes with those checklists as well. You can mention the no notes as well over there, right? Once your identification phase and analysis is done, now next it comes to the containment. This is where you make sure you contain the entire situation. You uh, contain the asset. You uh, you know contain the indicator of compromise, domain, URL, file hash. Uh, identify the vulnerabilities and everything. Right. Next, we have you have eradication phase. This is where you mitigate the uh, vulnerability. You remove the malicious content from the machine. Of course, in the content because in the containment phase itself, you have quarantined the machine. You have actually isolated the machine. Now, in the eradication phase, you either reimage your system. You maybe remove the malicious content. But personally, this is what we recommend. This is what it is most it is personally recommended by me okay next finally we have recovery phase where we validate uh, you know validate the eradicated host and uh, on quarantine asset we validate the reimage host we implement the re recovery monitoring as well closely we, we closely monitor those assets as well and then finally you get the report and in the report you can see the executive summary incident summary uh, incident timeline and everything so the, the XDR itself help you helps you build all all those detail and then you can finally download this report and share across with different stakeholder. Isn't it cool? Yes, it is. Thank you so much for watching.